<laughs> oh, I was having a good time messing with you guys. I don't know if you noticed I kept freezing and then not freezing. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Big News Show, episode number 32. That means we've done 30 of these things, and then we've done two more when we're done with tonight's. How's it going, everybody? Hello, hello, hello. Can you guys all hear me? Please, let's do the check-in so I don't do 20 minutes of the show before I realize that no one's hearing or seeing me again. So, if you can hear me, type ho! <laughs> it doesn't have to be ho, it could be it could be anything. Frozen again. F- I'm frozen again. Hello, Ben. Nice. All right. Greetings, Ben Bailey. What's up, Chooch? What's up, Mick Bangus? What's up, Elizabeth Fahey? What's up, Marta Wella? Spina Lobivita? Mark G? Angela O? Con Con? Elizabeth Fahey? Elizabeth Fahey? What's up, everybody? Everybody can hear me and see me. That's fantastic. As I said uh, just prior, welcome to the big new show. There's the logo. Enjoy it. Um, I was just getting ready to start, and I was like, why don't I bring that little cab and put it there? So I've got it with me here tonight, you guys. And just to show you just how terrific it is, the door's open. Like, there's tiny people that are going to need to get in this thing. Uh, But I've got it there in case we need it. I also have some old friends that I brought, uh, some chickens. I will not be attempting to juggle them. Uh, They filed a claim with animal rights people, and I'm no longer allowed to attempt to juggle rubber chickens. Even rubber chickens have rights. <laughs> good to hear from you guys. Good to good to see your voices. Good to hear your... to read your... Greetings, Ben Bailey, from Ben Bailey Boulevard. Oh, and it's someone you don't know. I know them, but you don't. Ben Bailey from Ben... Bailey Boulevard. It's true. That's where I live. I've lived there all my life. Oh, ho, ho. Sparky's a barkin'. So here's the situation here on the home front, everybody. Um, first of all, I'm going to blow it up for you guys because it's been so long. So. Boom! I hope the volume wasn't terrible on that. I mean, I remember one time I did it and everybody just like... Everyone shit themselves because it was so loud. What's up, Kelf? Uh, Laura Miskin, how are you? Throwback to chickens, yep. But no actual throwing of the chickens because it's a, become a legal matter at this point. You can't throw the chickens. But here's what's going on around the house before I forget. Uh, Sparky, the leaves are off the trees around the house now completely, which I don't know how it is where you live, uh, but here the difference is insane. Like when everything's grown in, late spring, summer, good portion of the fall, you can't see anything. You can't see the houses in back except for the roof of the one right there. And, like, you you can't see the road. You can't, you know, this is in the backyard. Uh, And largely in the front yard as well, which is nice. It's very private. But so when the, uh, so Sparky gets used to that, I guess, and then the leaves go and he can see everything and everyone, and he's just like on a tear for, for I, don't, it'll pro- I can't remember. It probably lasts through the whole winter. <laughs> we can't get him to come. He's just like barking, barking, and barking all day long. So you've already heard one. Maybe there'll be more. Con Con saying hello to Kelf. There's death Uh We had all our volumes up, and then boom, yeah, you're remembering. Oh, those were hard days. I, I was traumatized by the, by the attempted... Uh, Original attempt at launching this show. <laughs> Looking back, it was a traumatic experience for me. Hi, Patricia Bradshaw. I know you're saying hello to Con Con, but I will say hello too because I just saw your name for the first time. Uh, Kelf says, I have to see what I missed about chickens. Nothing. I'm just, I'm not allowed to juggle the chickens anymore. There's a, it became a legal matter. Um, but I can do whatever I want to bobblehead Ben. <laughs> So, yeah, Sparky's barking, but we're back home. Emma's back home. She was in Australia for four weeks with her people and had a great trip, but she's pretty wiped. Uh, And I did some traveling. I I went to Detroit. I did shows in uh, Detroit at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle, which isn't really a castle, 
It's just a club. I know it sounds like pretty amazing, like comedy in a castle. Why? Uh, but, you know, it's just a building that kind of looks a tiny little bit like a castle, I guess. I, but it's a very nice club. Very nice guy, Mark Ridley himself, came down to say hello and watch a couple of shows. The other guys were like, yeah, he only comes around when somebody really good is here. And I'm like, yeah, and you guys say that to everybody. Um, but it was awesome. Awesome weekend. Saw some old, old friends from, and I mean, they are awesome old. No, I saw some old, old friends from, if they're old, so am I, from when I was a very small person uh, and lived in uh, Rochester, Michigan. Yeah, that's right. Rochester. I was born in Bowling Green, Kentucky. That's right. Kentuckians. What up? What's up, y'all? Um, then lived in uh, Michigan for a while and then to Jers which is, you know, kind of where I'm, I guess I hail from, but, you know, you know, I'm really from all of them. So one place had, had a southern accent, Kentucky, Michigan has Midwestern, and then Jersey has Jersey, and, and I think that it's kind of how I ended up not really having too much of an accent of any kind, uh, which is interesting because, you know, I speak. This is what I do for workings. I speak to the people as I speak to you now. But, yeah, so I lived in Rochester, Michigan as a, as a young kid, uh, and it was awesome. And I have very fond memories of it. Little town of Rochester, which apparently has grown a lot. I was too little to really understand how big a place was then and compared to now. But uh, they do an amazing Christmas lights display there in Rochester, Michigan, as I understand it. Um, and they, uh, I don't know if they still do it, but when I was a kid, they had like every year we had this, uh, maybe it was 4th of July, one of the, one of the weekends in the summer, they had the floatable boatable, which was like build your own raft, which was like a showpiece raft. And they would have like a competition. They were like floats, uh, that actually floated on like floats in a, I guess they're floating on air, but these were in the water. Um, but so that was really fun, the floatable boatable. And one time, years and years later, I was driving limos, and I had a guy in the back who was flying to Detroit, and I said, where do you live? And he said, Rochester. And I was like, when he was leaving, I said, enjoy the floatable boatable, and he looked at me like I was an alien. <laughs> hey, it's Kowalski. What's up, Kowalski? Good evening. Got a few minutes before I leave for work. Just thought I'd say hi. Glad you did, Mr. Kowalski. Sorry you got to go to work, and you can't take us with you. There's Angela O. Oh, what is up? Hi, David Kowalski. How are you enjoying your underwear? Let me ask you this, David. How is your underwear that I made for you? Hmm? Is it good? <laughs> I'm drinking coffee tonight still, you guys. You might yet again be with me for the transition from coffee to beer. Ted Alexandro, very funny comedian, friend of mine, Mr. Ted Alexandro. Uh, if you've seen Gaffigan in the last however many years, you probably saw Ted because he was opening for Jim for a while, and he's hilarious. He's got a great uh, thing about coffee and wine and making the switch. What part of the day? You guys should check it out. You should look it up and check it out and listen to it. And I sort of slipped into somebody else's voice there, and I think it's because it's a guy that I saw. Uh, I played in a in a golf tournament, the, the Comedy Gives Back Celebrity Golf Tournament number two, the second annual. Worked on the committee and played in the tournament last Monday. Can't believe it was just last Monday. It feels like an like ages ago. Uh, but it was great fun. Great day at a place called Spanish Hills. There were lots of people there, lots of very funny people. Um, comedians and non-comedians alike. And uh, I don't know who's asking me when I will be coming out west. I was ju I literally just got back from being about as out west as one can be. Uh, but I will be coming back out again. Which part of out west are you in? Because I'm going to be doing shows around the Seattle area again in, uh, in February. I got two theater dates, one in Everett. They're not up on the site yet because we don't have links yet. But uh, one of them's in Everett, Washington, and one of them's in Enumclaw. 
I think that's how you say it. Enumclaw. Crazy name, but that's the answer. February. That's when I'm coming back out west. Um, Mark G. I just came back. I, are you are you people listening at all? I will come out west. Which part of out west? You're on a bridge. Well, there's a lot of bridges out there. You're gonna have to be more specific, Mark. When I used to be a limo driver, I'll come to AZ. I got to book gigs though. I can't just come and you know sit in the sand. <laughs> Yes, Lance. Everett. But, well, like half an hour, 40 minutes from Seattle, something like that? Yes, Everett and then Enum Claw. Take a look at the venues. It's two theaters. I know nothing about them, but I love to do theater gigs. So when they come asking, I'm like, yeah, man, I'll come. Enum Claw. Don't look up what Enum Claw is known for. Well, of course, everyone's going to do it now. It is a random place to play, but isn't everything a random place to play? Uh, anyway, I played in the golf tournament and it was fantastic. And I had a chance to chat with, uh, with Patrick Warburton, Patty Warbucks uh, on Twitter. If you guys want to follow him, what a super nice and funny guy. The first time I met him and I never show that I'm nervous. So people have no idea, but cause I just look, I just start to look like really intense and angry when I'm nervous. But Warburton's like a star, and here I'm a kid who's done cash cab, but not, not, it just what didn't feel, I was like, holy, holy shit, it's Patrick fucking Warburton. And he was like, hey. And, uh, but so I saw him again, I mean, it was years ago, that first time I met him, and so I saw him again, I was like, I never told you how incredibly funny you are, you're fucking hilarious, man. Because uh, I loved him as Putty, for one. When Elaine, it's my favorite, maybe my favorite part of Seinfeld, is the last part of the scene with the two of them where she's like don't wait for me and he's like all right <laughs> it's just so hilarious such an amazing deadpan anyway i saw him and he's a great dude so hi patrick warburton check him out uh patty warbucks is his name uh soul joel's marta is working on soul joel's soul joel will have me back for sure he's a great guy uh and it's been long enough soul joel what's up Hit me up, man. I'll come back and do a show inside. <laughs> I'll never forget that night, Marta, at Soul Joel's. I don't know if you were at the show. I think I did two shows. But I was like, oh, it's so good to be back on a stage in front of a live audience and hear the sounds of... And geese were like, hark, hark, flying over, <laughs> honking right at the moment. Like, Those aren't the sounds. <clears throat> Those are not the sounds. I know I tell that story like every week, maybe. <laughs> oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Wow. Did you guys get that weird like overlap of noises? That was kind of terrifying and kind of awesome. Watched a movie last night. Uh, here's a quote from it. I'll give you guys this is tonight's first movie quote. You have to name the movie. Those of you who are new to this, you name the movie. You name the character and you name the actor. Okay, here it is. You ready? Nope. <laughs> oh, you talked to Smarta. You spoke with Soul Joel. He wants me back. I want you back. We were at the early show in Royersford. The train. All right, the train went by. Yeah. The sounds. So good to get back to stand up. And the usual sounds that come along with it, like geese flying overhead and trains. <laughs> the show I had done before that was in like White Plains. First time they did a show, this comic Joe Matarese, great guy, funny guy, Mark G, look out, hold your ears. Let me know if things are too loud, you guys. I feel like I had good levels, but blowing it up sounds a bit crazy right now to me. But thanks, Mark G, for the five beans. Appreciate you. Slow Joe Matteris, because he talks kind of slow, um, is a comic. He had that thing, that show going on there, and I think it was in White Plains. And it was literally like the like behind the pipe tent or pole tent, whatever you call it. Thing. <laughs> you know what it is. It's where they used to keep the rock salt for the roads. That's how I opened those shows. They're like, what else could we use these for? So I was like, 
comedy show. <laughs> well, it's the rock salt and the sand for the highways, but we could also use it for comedy shows. <laughs> um, but yeah, the trains, the train station was right there. So there was like, and there was, it's like the end of a, it's like a hub. I feel like it's like a hub because there was a lot of trains in and out. And I just kept making the joke that I couldn't wait to be on one of them and get the hell out of there. Blow it up is quieter than my voice. Okay, good. Thank you. I appreciate that, Lance O, because there's a complicated system here, and I'm not being sarcastic to get all this stuff uh, coordinated. You know, so <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, hell of a trip, you guys. Sold like 1,700 tickets in Detroit. That's over five shows. That's a great amount of tickets for me to have sold. Uh, saw some old friends, had some great shows with a couple of other comics, uh, great dudes. The MC was six foot seven. I'm like six, five and a half now, probably. Uh, and the feature was a, a tiny little six foot four. And he was just like, or six, three, I think. And he's just like, how am I the shortest guy on this lineup? <laughs> He's like a big guy. Um, funny guys. Good time. Great time in Detroit. And then a cool flight to L.A. I flew, uh, flew from Detroit to L.A. and had like one of those really clear days, for the most part, flying over the west. <clears throat> I got a picture of Monument Valley from the plane with my phone that it's it's crazy how good it is. The, the cameras in these phones unreal man uh maybe i'll figure out how to share pictures next time and i could share that with you guys but uh fantastic pictures on the way just the whole mountain range in a line ahead of me rockies glacier trails you know um i saw vegas i could see so i had the map i had this the flight map in front of me and you know it's got all cities all these different things on it so I'm like, all right, I'm looking out. I can see pretty far. So I saw Vegas from the plane going to L.A. from like 100 miles. I could just barely make it out. And my phone, my iPhone 12 Pro Max, not that I'm endorsing, but like unbelievable. I was able to take a picture of that and get it on the phone. It's insane. Uh, but, yeah, it was super cool. Had a great time. Grand Canyon was completely clouded over. I was like, I'm going to get some pics of the Grand Canyon. Nope. It was just like filled with cloud. The only part of the whole trip that was. And like 20 minutes of... There's no there's no glaciers there now, uh, Marta. Mark G, good lord, man. Blowing it up and blowing it up. To all the marks that be blowing it up. <laughs> $15. Thanks, man. You don't know what that means to me. I don't either, technically, but I, I, I do sincerely appreciate it. There were not still glaciers, Marta, just the tracks that they left. As they moved incredibly slowly, which is no surprise given how heavy they are and what they're made of and that they have no feet or legs or means of locomotion. Post the pics in your community section. Hey, guys, I just, uh, I just learned something. There's a community section on my YouTube channel. <laughs> perhaps I will figure out how to do that and do that yes the Grand Canyon it always just hides on you right Elizabeth <laughs> um then I flew in as we were coming into LA which is just seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it was already huge you know they're like uh you're on the plane or like uh we're just uh over uh, Los Angeles County on beginning our initial descent, you know, and then you fly for like another half an hour. I'm like, are we going like 400 miles an hour? <laughs> How are we flying over Los Angeles for a fucking half an hour at 400? It's 200 miles wide. It's not, but it's huge and getting bigger. And as we're coming in, I'm like, you know what? I think I might be able to see the, uh, the SoFi stadium from here. And I look out, I put the little blind back up, and oh my God, there it is. Took a pic, another one that I could share in the community section of my channel. 
if I ever figure out how to do that. Um, so I got a great picture of SoFi Stadium, which is amazing looking from like right on top of it. And then we land and I turn things back on on my phone and a, and a little like news alert, not really news, but thing pops up and it's a picture of uh, Brian Cranston or video of Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul at SoFi Stadium watching the football game. Uh, and I think you guys must know who I who I who those guys are. Uh, most notably for both of them, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. And I was like, oh my god, I just took a picture of that building that they are now in. So I posted about that, and neither one of them responded. I, I wasn't hurt at all. No, I didn't expect them to. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Buckle up, people. Because it's time for Warp Speed! <laughs> oh, hey! You guys are back. I thought you went to outer space. Yes, the Breaking Bad Boys. Nobody got my quote, my movie quote. No one even took a guess. It was, nope. Yeah, maybe not the Rocky Mountains. Some mountains out there. <laughs> I thought it was the Rockies. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? Nope. That's not it. Have I ever been to Gravity Hill? Oh, no, she's asking Marta Weller. Sorry, I, I, I really hate it when I interrupt you guys' chat <laughs> with this annoying show that I do during your chat. <laughs> I used to think you guys did the chat afterwards to talk about the show, but really it's to for you to be able to have a conversation without me interrupting constantly, <laughs> which is fine by me. Nope is the movie by the same name. That's right, Lanzo. Do you know the actor's name? Do you know the character's name? I'm not going to do a movie review. Someone said there was a movie called Nope. Well, someone was right, Spinal Abifida. Nope. Never been there, Kelf. Nope. Tombstone. Nope. I missed quote. Anyone remind, please. What's up, Black One E? First I thought it was Blackle. Uh, no, Kelf, thanks for including me. I have never been to Gravity Hill. <laughs> this entire platform cracks me up. Oh, my fucking God. You watch your mouth, young lady. Um, yeah, it's Nope. And the character's name? Anybody? Otis Jr. Yes, come to the after show chat. No pen to deal with. <laughs> yeah, don't keep interrupting. You guys are like, so how's your life going? And I'm like, hey, oh! <laughs> I think it's time that we take a viewer question, everybody. So somebody type in a good question, and I'll give you an answer to it. Damn. Damn, says Mark G. Viewer questions, folks, go ahead and uh, and hit me up with those whenever you feel like it. This is the Big News Show, episode 32. Honestly, I didn't think we'd make it this far. Mostly because of you guys. Just kidding. It's because of me, and I couldn't handle it. I was going to have a nervous breakdown. Ben, you're the cool friend who hosts our Sunday meetings. Also, Gravity Hill is where your car will go uphill even in neutral. Wait a minute. Somebody you don't know has a question. Here it is. What's your favorite video game franchise? Okay, news to me, there are video game franchises. <laughs> uh, I played Halo for a while, and I kind of liked that. That was fun. Um... 
I played uh, Grand Theft Auto for a little while, but I was just like, you know what, this uh, this is all like crime and awfulness. <laughs> um, and you're like, just you can like light people on fire, and like I like this is not uh, this is not a reality that I want to go to. Um, oh, this just in from Spot Center. Na 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 na. Thanks, man. Two bucks. Two bucks gets you a blow up. Any stories about your celebrity golf tournament? Well, I saw Patrick Warburton there, uh, which was cool. I saw Bill Burr. Uh, I saw a bunch of comedians that I know. I played some golf with my other clubs that have different shafts, and I kind of sucked, but it was still fun. Uh, we came in dead last. Uh, net and gross, we came in dead last, which if you've ever played in a, a celebrity or other sort of charity non legitimately competitive golf tournament uh everyone cheats uh if you don't you finish dead last and yeah if you are one of the other teams and you're listening right now you fucking heard me yeah yeah if they made if they remade the fly would you play the role of seth brumble i thought it was brundle uh, Brundle, Brundlefly. Uh, of course I would. Are you kidding me, Deathstruction? Uh, did I smoke a cigar with Billy Boy? No, I did not. He was sick, but he came anyway. Um, and, and he hates golf. I was like, dude, you want to go hit some balls? And he goes, no, I fucking hate golf. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to go hit some balls. <laughs> um... But, yeah, no, I'm not a cigar guy anyway. Like, I know they're, like, an acquired thing. Oh, hearts are for Sparky and Emma. Elizabeth, you know I, you know it doesn't work that way. But thanks anyway, and I'm blowing you up. <laughs> uh, Black 1E, have you ever considered consider to do a Hitman game parody? No, not until just now. Not until... Just now. Kelf says, if you come to Soul Joel's, I promise Marta and I will be quiet through your set, aside from laughing. L O L. Well that's a that's a pretty good a pretty good uh promise. My impersonation of who? Oh, of Bilber? Yeah, well, I known that motherfucker since we were kids. Since neither one of us done nothing, you understand me? All right, let's do it. Fuck it. It's time for numbers, everybody. Everybody's favorite segment. It's it's time for numbers, which means we're going to talk about the number 32 because this is episode number 32. And I'm going to try to like sift through these and give you guys just the good ones. So this might be a very short segment. Wow, I screwed that up. <laughs> let's try that again. It's numbers, everyone. It's time for numbers. Which means I should be small in the corner. Da, 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 da. Year 32, XXXII in Roman numerals was a leap year. Okay. Jesus is said to have been crucified in the year... 32. And here I am, two of me again. I could have sworn there were some good ones in here. Uh, 32 is the number of piano sonatas completed and numbered by Beethoven. Well, that's 32 more than I've done. 32 is the freezing point of water at sea level. What do you think of that? What do you guys think of that? <laughs> Information. I am bringing you guys new information. There are 32 Kabbalistic paths of wisdom, and it says which one is Madonna on. <laughs> 32 is the atomic number of the element geranium. Germanium. Ger a geranium is a plant. Germanium. Uh, which is to say 32 is the number of protons. Yeah, 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 we know that. 32 is the number of teeth in a full set of an adult human if the wisdom teeth have not been extracted. 
So if you keep your wisdom teeth, you have a total of 32 teeth, which means that I have 28 because I had all four of those awful things pulled out of my fucking head. The Route 32 bus in Philadelphia, That's this is not, no. I try to use a different source, and these are, you know. It's going to be like uh, when one of the hosts, Carson or Letterman, would throw the whoosh, chuck whatever it is. Nope, we're not doing that one. 32 is the number of pages in the average comic book. Now that, I think, is interesting. Did anybody know that? I wonder if there's a reason for that. Because that works. Uh, famous athletes with the number 32. Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin McHale, Carl Malone, Magic Johnson, Dr. J, Sandy Koufax, Steve Carlton, Claude Lemieux, Marcus Allen, Jim Brown, and Franco Harris. I kind of like that as an idea. I like a, uh, what do you guys think of that? Athletes who wore that number or wear that number. I like that. There are 32 traditional country counties in Ireland. Ireland is made up of 32 traditional counties. Nope. <laughs> Somebody threw the card. I thought it was Letterman. He'd throw it and it would smash through the... But that was when he was done with it. I think it was Carson who would read a, a thing and then go... And then throw it away like he wasn't going to, you know, I'm not doing that. Uh, 32 short films about Glenn Gould. Is a film divided into 32 short films, thereby mimicking the 32-part structure of Box Goldberg Variations, a recording of which Gould made famous or which made Gould famous. Okay. I have no idea what any of that is about. So if you guys would please research that and get back to me with none of the pertinent information, that would be fantastic. The 32-bar form is, a pop, is popular especially among Tin Pan Alley songwriters and in rock and roll. Deuce Coupe is a slang term referring to, now this is interesting, referring to the 1932 Ford Coupe. Little Deuce Coupe was a pop song written in the 32-bar form by the Beach Boys. Wait, what? Some yogis believe there are 32 bars of energy running through our heads, storing the electromagnetic component of all the thoughts, ideas, attitudes, decisions, and beliefs that we have ever had about anything. That is a lot to believe, to just casually believe in. Like a lot of very specific stuff to just sort of go, yeah. That's I think that's what's going on in there. <laughs> I'm not ta I'm not saying it's not good. Uh, what's up, Kevin? Kevin's Bacon Bits has joined us. Hello and welcome. What's up, Kira? Tis I. Tis I, Ben Bailey. Welcome, welcome to the show. I say. Okay, this is ridiculous. All right, I'm not. Wait, I'm getting ahead. Uh. I lost where I was. Ha, 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 ha. Here's a weird random thing. 32 is 40% of 80. <laughs> okay, great. Great, thanks. 32 kilos is a series of photographs by Yvonne Thine in which she altered images of models to make them look anorexic as if they weighed only 32 kilos, which is 70 pounds. I think I remember seeing that. According to UrbanDictionary.com, B32 is one of the most dangerous and rapidly growing gangs in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, and originally started on Bay 32nd Street. That Hopefully that information will never be of use to you, but maybe. Maybe, oh maybe it will. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Psalm 32 begins, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. I love the whole idea of forgiveness. Title 32 of the U.S. Code outlines the role of the National Guard and allows members of the Guard to serve as law enforcement in their respective states. Title 32, if you're in the National Guard, 
you can serve as law enforcement in the state that you live in. Okay, and this is the one I'm going to end on, and this is crazy weird, and I can't imagine that it's actually true. Uh, But a beheaded body can make 32 steps, can take 32 steps, according to a legend involving King Ludwig of Bavaria in 1336. A beheaded body can walk up to 32 steps. It says make 32 steps. I mean, I believe that maybe uh, a beheaded body could, like, take a couple of steps. They're not building a fucking stairway, I'll tell you that much. And that was numbers, everybody, so let's play the thing again. (laughs) Because it's new, and it allows me to not be on screen for a second. It's time for numbers, the most boring part of any show. (laughs) Elizabeth Fahey says, oh my God, how could you test that? Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know how you test that. Well, I mean, I know how you would, but it's illegal. It's totally illegal. The stairway to heaven, says Red, taking the stairway to heaven. Nice, Red. I just read what Red wrote. Red, 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 Red wrote. That is like two stories worth of stairs. Yeah, 23. Make can make 23 stairs. <laughs> make 23 steps. I don't care. There's no way to make 23 steps. I don't think you could take 23 steps unless you were crazy King Ludwig. Ludwig. Why are you running around like King Ludwig with his head chopped off? I shouldn't be making jokes about someone's beheading, should I? Uh, too late. It's a bit late for that. Oh, what the hell? Let's go to the beach for a minute. Hey, I'm back. Life was a beach, and now it's not anymore. What's up, everybody? I used a little decoy there to go and get a a new beer. I'm not drinking a Stella. Holy shit. Done with the coffee, and I've moved on. I'm drinking a... A Pilsner Urkel. Buddy of mine brought him over one night, and, and I've had him in the fridge since, and they're delicious. I mean, they are beer, you know, so it's they're pretty good. Crystal Noda, what's up? Didn't see you before. How's it going? The pun game is strong in here. <laughs> yeah. If there's such a thing as a strong pun game. Uh, I don't, I'm not keeping up with what you guys are saying. But I thought it might be nice to go down to the beach there just for a minute, especially because it's, uh, it's winter. It's very cold and wintry. I think it might have been, uh, it might have been classified as blustery. Blustery today. And it's so much worse when it's cold and rainy. Like warm and rainy, no problem. Cold and rainy is like, what? Uh, Kira, this is not replacing Stella. It's just what I have right now because a friend brought it, so I'm, I'm drinking this too. I know it's crazy that I don't have Stella. I hope you guys are going to be all right. It's literally, I, you know what, I, I think it's the first. Stella Arto is good beer. I think it's the first show going all the way back to the <laughs> to the working from homes. This is the first time I've ever drank another beer on the show other than Stella. Watch, Pilsner Raquel is going to offer me a sponsorship deal immediately after one episode. <laughs> after all those episodes of <laughs> drinking Stella, they never acknowledged me once. And I just landed a deal with... Pilsner or <laughs> It's not true. 
Stella Arto is good beer. This is a little heavier, a little bit, a little bit more flavorsome. I'm enjoying it. I liked it years ago when I, when it was new or at least new to me. I enjoyed it, and I hadn't had one in a very long time. Yes, Kevin, this is an unprecedented event. Let's take another viewer question. Death Destruction says, do you ever do the streetcar named Stella yell when you run out of Stella? <laughs> um, Crystal Notice says, it's going great, Ben. I'm usually watching on my tablet, and I don't chat because I'm not signed in on there. But now you're on your computer, so you're chatting. Well, welcome. Nice to hear from you. Nice to have you. Uh, I do it in my head, Death Destruction, whenever I get one. I, that's part of the fun. Whenever I go to the fridge for another Stella, I go, Stella, in my head. Stella. Um, Kira Mikus, you have a ferret named Stella? Stella Atois? <laughs> Kevin's Bacon Bits ever been in any crazy car wrecks? No. Thank God, no. I haven't. I've been in, I crashed my car once. Driving home from college on Route 13, coming up through Delaware. Uh, a truck pulled out onto Route 13. It didn't make the turn, so it stopped in the road because uh, it would have smashed into the wall, which I believe it did because it, it knew that the guy driving it knew that he wasn't going to make the turn, so uh, he, he just stopped, and there was full-on traffic coming at 60 miles, 65 miles an hour, whole pack of cars. Everybody had to whoosh, drown on the brakes. I started to skid, took my foot off, steered around, and went over on the shoulder. The truck was blocking, but it was like four more cars up. Uh, and a guy, another guy did the same thing, pulled out and I, bam, I ran into the back of him, dented the hood of the car, nothing too bad. I replaced it myself and it, it looked horrible. I, like I, <laughs> I used Bondo and paint and paint. I like, I tried to do everything and didn't know with no instruction at all. And it just looked awful. The color was right because <laughs> I bought the right paint. But it looked horrible. Great car, though. There's a Caprice Classic. Chevrolet Caprice Classic. I may have told you guys this on the show before. My father had worked for GM. His dad worked for GM. Uh, so for as long as my grandfather or my grandmother was alive, we had a 15% discount on GM. General Motors cars, so we bought Chevys, GM cars, all the time. Like that's mostly what we had in our lives, and uh, so we had when we moved to the town that we lived in in Jersey. We moved in there, and we had two, and it never seemed weird to me, um, until one of my friends, the same friend, my friend Seamus, who actually brought this beer over here pointed out to me much later in our lives how strange it was to you know when neighbors moved in and had two identical cars two caprice classics one was like really light blue and one was really light green <laughs> um and those were our first cars my sister and I thing ran forever i drove that caprice until it had 240,000 miles on it, which back then was huge. Uh, but by the time, by the end of it, it would only go in reverse and low gear one. Uh, and it was like, you know, it had, it had, it had been through a lot. Um, yeah, I think I left it in a parking lot. <laughs> I think I had, I mean, I, it got towed away because I couldn't, it wouldn't go, and then it had to be, <clears throat> it would have cost more, you know, basically it was kind of totaled without the insurance company saying it was totaled, but, uh, oh, Mark G, again, dude, thanks, man, 
Anyway, yeah, I crashed it, and then I tried to fix the car myself with parts from a junkyard, and uh, not not great. Did not come out great. <laughs> All right, let's get on to another segment here. Uh, a segment that I call The Good News, uh, be- because that's the name of it. I choose the names, you know, so it'd be silly if I refused to call it by the name that I chose for it. This is where I pick out some stuff that uh, I found in the news that I think is good news. Uh, and to be fair, it's really something that other people deemed good news, and I'm just reading it. This comes from the BBC. Uh, France is becoming the first country to start contracting for floating offshore wind farms. So giant plastic structures uh, that float on the ocean and collect wind energy. Ooh, Lance O just hit me. Whoa, I got a couple of blow-ups here. Sorry, Lance. Appreciate you, buddy. And Mark G. Uh, again. Mark G. Did you hit the lottery or something, man? You're blowing it up all night. Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate you. So I think that's pretty cool. The idea that there's these floating things that are not going to mess with the ecosystem of the ocean uh, are going to be out there collecting you know, wind energy. Kira, Kira, you guys are Kira, Oh my god, it's too much! I'm starting to blush! Wait, was that... Uh, Kowalski says I'm not seeing it. I didn't see that. Uh, thank you for supporting my company. 23 years. Oh, okay. Ah, what's up, man? Kowalski... I don't know if that's come through that you worked for GM. Yeah, we, dude, we had GM everything. My grandfather, George Bailey, born in the same year as George Bailey in the movie. Um, so that movie is a huge Christmas thing for us. Uh, was like a VP way back when. Way back when. And they were like, you know what? We want you to set up an incentive to get, we have a lot of uh, employees over a certain age, George Bailey, and we want you to set up a package that will entice them into retirement. And so he did, and he said, uh, I'm pretty sure it works when he presented it because we already have one person who signed up for it. And they're like, who's that? And he was like, me. (laughs) And then he retired. (laughs) Had a new Cadillac from GM every year. When we were kids, every time they came through, he and my grandmother, they had had a brandy new Cadillac. So I think that's very cool, uh... Wind farms, offshore wind farms. As long as they're enviro-friendly, which I'm sure they are. I'm not sure. I really hope they are. Um, also, an, uh, another piece of good news. While the World Cup in gutter, cutter, gutter, uh, seems to be a World Cup of problems, initiatives around the world are actually using soccer as a way to solve issues. There's apparently a ton of new programs that support men's mental health, help women build women and girls build confidence, and there's even uh, something set up to bring people back together after they have a conflict, we get them out on the soccer field and get them to like work it out that way. Um, these are all little bits of good news, which you guys can investigate further if you wish. The France offshore thing was Kowalski blowing it up. Booyah! Source for that was BBC. Uh, there's a pay... This is another another story, uh, another item here. Pay as you like grocery store uh, has opened up. A pay as you like grocery store has opened up in St. Louis. And it's been very successful. Shoppers are allowed to pay what they can within within a certain uh, set of parameters. They can pay 20% more or they can pay 20% less than the price on the sticker. And it's working because people are that can pay more are paying more, and it totally evens out the, or almost totally evens out the, the 20% that the other 
others don't pay. Yes, Kowalski, thanks for the tip, man. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Oh, you're welcome, buddy. I'm happy to be here for you guys. I know it's been a few weeks. I'm sorry that I was uh, unable to do it, but I was out of town. I was traveling. I was doing shows. I was... <laughs> I don't know what accent that. I don't know what that. I almost slipped into Inspector Clouseau. I was traveling, doing shows. I was known as the Pavlova of the par of the parallels. That's what he says right before. Oh, movie quote. Let's pretend I didn't just give it away. I was known as the Pavlova of the parallels. Come as you are. Pay as you can. Mark G. Good lord, Mark G. Uh, that's it for the good news, everybody, for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I often said that the news news was really just the bad news, and we should have a segment where somebody should do the good news. Uh, and there's a lot of these places that report the good news on social media and stuff, so I decided to tap into those and start bringing you guys some good news. And I mean, like, good news that I think is good for everybody. Uh, thanks, Kelf. It's never a problem. Does your dog bite? <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought you said your dog did not bite. This is not my dog. Laura Miskin likes the good news. Fantastic. What's not to like, right? It's good news. It is good news. Oh, I forgot to say uh, birthdays. I was going to do like some uh, celebrity or notable birthdays for the date. I thought might be fun because when I do the holidays that I look up the holidays, uh, which are coming in a bit, uh, we also get celebrity birthdays up there. Um, and I'm picking ones. This is how I chose which ones to share. They're the ones that I care about. <laughs> There's a whole list of, like, millennials and younger that I, like, have no idea who they are. I'm like, who cares if it's that dude's birthday? Oh, my God. I've completely, complete Kevin and your bacon bits, thank you so much. I'm sorry, everybody. I know you're getting thirsty, so. It's time for you to drink your drink. Cheers, everybody. It's a cash cab drive-by. And we're going to do like five in a row because I just made you sit for 55 minutes without one. This whole time I'm like, what's that thing we normally do? Does anyone remember? Cheers, folks. Very nice to be home and back here with you guys hanging out in the studio. I, I appreciate you being here. And I owe you another one and I wasn't lying, so we're doing it again. And I'll even do the dance again. <laughs> All right, I was admittedly getting a little bit too into that. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Time for you to drink your drink again, because we're making up for lost time. Uh, so sorry to make you guys wait so long. I think you guys understand the rules of the cash cab drive-by. You are allowed to drink when we're not doing it, but I know, you know, it makes it easier. Mm. Oh, that was fun. I can't believe I totally, totally forgot about that. It's been a few weeks since I've been here at the office, you know what I mean? Uh, so the birthdays that I thought were of note today, happy birthday. Uh, only one of them is still alive, but we're going to wish them happy birthday anyway. Bruce Lee. If Bruce Lee were alive, he would be 116 today. I have no idea how old he would be. Uh, Jimi Hendrix. November 27th was Jimi Hendrix's birthday. Happy birthday, Jimi. And to uh, the one who is still around, uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy. Cheers, Bill. Thank you for spreading science. And being the science guy. The dog likes the booty dance, too. He gets so pumped. Oh, that's fantastic. If I could just reach one canine out there in the world and move him to the point of wanting to dance, then I've succeeded. I have succeeded in every way possible. Well, one way. One way. 
one way. Yep. R.I.P. Jimmy. It's been a while, but, you know, it's not too late. May he rest in peace. I read a thing about Hendrix that said that uh, he just was playing guitar always. Like, he lived with these two other guys that I guess were in the band, the drummer and the bass player, I think is the deal. And he was just always playing the guitar. And, like, if they talked to him, he would, like, sing his answers. He'd be like, no, I don't want any more cereal right now. Um, and I thought that was kind of a fun little fact. And I and I said that to a friend of mine, and he, a British guy, and he went, what an asshole. <laughs> Which was a new take on it. <laughs> I was like, well, that's kind of a practical look at things. Marta says, our dog insists on going outside when he hears your voice. Nothing against you. He just knows it's potty time. <laughs> I have that effect on a lot of animals, Marta, not just your dog. <laughs> so I didn't just go to Detroit. I didn't just go to Los Angeles on my trip. I also went to San Jose. Do you know the way to San Jose? Because I've got to go there. Um, I had to go there. I did go there just last week. Uh, and it was fun. Had a, had a good time in, uh, in San Jose. It's kind of a crazy little town. Uh, and they were like, th there's not a lot of people walking around downtown. And they were like setting up this Christmas village thing right outside the hotel that I was in. Uh, and it was kind of weird because I like went and walked around. I was like, oh, they're setting up a Christmas thing. But it wasn't like open yet. Well, there wasn't really anyone working on it. And there was like a lot of homeless people that were like kind of in it. So it just was like this very surreal first half an hour in San Jose, like walking around this kind of Christmas homeless encampment. Uh, and there's this woman was, was like on the phone. She was like, I'm good. I'm good. She just kept saying, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And I was like, wow, she's good. She's on the phone. And then after a while, I was like, no, she's on drugs of some sort. She is not on the phone. She doesn't have a phone. She doesn't have an earpiece. She's just good. Um, and that put a weird vibe in me, so I went back in the hotel. Uh, oddly enough, they were like, uh, no room service because of COVID protocols. I was like, did I did I fly t into last year? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, is there any place to order from? She's like, no. Great. So uh, what should I do? Go? Should I go hunting? So I went down into the bar area of the hotel and I went through the doorway into the bar and there's like a little podium and it says please use front entrance I'm like I can't come in this way I'm already in and I but I can't come in this way so I like had to go outside and around and come in that way it's pretty weird the bartender was very excited uh oh there's a viewer question from Elizabeth Fahey that I'm going to answer and I've made these graphics, so I am going to damn well use them. Hey, Ben, just recently listened to your album, and it's really good. Uh, Elizabeth Fahey, I will say this to you. Thank you very much. Uh, and what album? The music? You say you listen to the, to the band? To the, to the musical album? Lance O is a storehouse of useless information. Sounds like the half to death lady. <laughs> he beat him half to death. Con Con, don't tell people that you know what squirrel tastes like. People don't need to know that. Were you part of a traveling minstrel show and you would kill squirrels? Say wah! Kelf! Kelf! What are you. Are you referencing. Don't shoot the pharmacist? Is that what that is? Elizabeth says the music. Yes. Elizabeth, you listen to my album. That's fantastic. I'm so flattered. Uh, the idiots have a question. How about that? <laughs> Are 
are you going to be making any more live stand-up comedy performances on stage? Yes, you idiots, of course, it's my job. Uh, sorry, it's just because you call yourself the idiots. Of course I will. I, in fact, have some coming up. I think I'll be able to show them to you. Uh, let's take a look at the website here. We'll scroll down a little bit. That's the realbenbailey.com, by the way. Uh, you see here, Appleton, Wisconsin. That is next weekend, this coming weekend. I will be doing four on stage live stand up comedy performances I will be making in Appleton, Wisconsin, at a place called Skyline Comedy Club, which is a very fun place. Uh, looking very much forward to that. The, the only other one that's on the website right now is Wilmington, Delaware, and that is. March 23rd, it's just outside. I think it's Arden, Delaware. It's just outside of Wilmington, Delaware. Not far from where I crashed my first car coming home from college. Uh, but I'll be doing a show there at the Candlelight Theater. Guys, if you are going to go to my website while we're here, uh, you can scroll down and find the latest episode of this show that you're watching right now. Um, there's some more pictures. There's some more about me and what I do. Me looking pretty cool in an old car. On the Sunset Strip. Oh, that's what that is, too. Uh, but if you go there, you can find links to all of my social media here, you guys. And it would be great, uh, great help to me if you guys uh, go to those and follow me. It doesn't cost you nothing, but it helps me. Uh, you can go to Shopify and listen to my stand-up there. You know, there's the bio. The tour will just show you the dates again. There's some other photos on there and stuff. But I'll leave some of it for you guys. The one part I want to make sure you notice is the Shopify store. If you move up here in the corner and you click on the Shopify store, it will take you to, believe it or not, the Shopify store. Uh, and when you go there, you'll start to see cool stuff like Sparkle Bark hoodies. Uh, if you go down to the click all or view all button, click on it, you'll be able to see all the stuff you can scroll through. There's like everything from mugs to phone cases to mouse pads to buttons to hoodies to magnets to notebooks to t-shirts to pint glasses beer cozies blankets more hoodies live from vix uh a, a big seller the your t-shirt killed my life t-shirt um because my manager a fellow by the name of jonathan brandstein was trying to make sure that uh i had a clause here on the shopify store that said you know i'm not responsible and he was like, but I'm not saying anyone's going to ever be like, you know, your T-shirt killed my life. And I was like, that is hilarious. I'm making a T-shirt that says that. I think I've sold the most of those of anything on here so far. Uh, there's a good ass toast T-shirt. There's an instructional place head here pillow, which I, I, I like that, but no one's bought any of those yet. Uh, a pillow sham that says flip over for coolness. Please let me sleep. I'm ask. Sparklebark Jigsaw Puzzle, the Vacuum Insulated Tumbler, 22 ounces, and the Keep Your Ass Clean Unisex Heavy Cotton Tea. <laughs> so that's all the stuff. There's a lot of stuff on there. I don't know how great the view was, but you guys know how to find it. Anything that you buy on there does not just support me. It does support me, but a percentage of the proceeds also go to, uh, will also go to share our strength. Uh, a charity that I believe does a great job of fighting hunger right here in these United States. And also, every single order will pay for one pound of plastic to be pulled out of the ocean. And there's more good news on that front. I'm going to save it for next week's good news segment. Uh, Mark G. just blowing it up all night long, this guy. He's unstoppable. He just keeps giving me money. Um, ben, you should make the... Part horse body shirt. I'm working on it. I'm working on it, Kevin's Bacon Bits. But I remembered an image uh, that I want to use for that, and I haven't found it yet. It's from one of the old shows. You, you might even remember it if you think about it for a second. I got to find that picture, and then I'm going to make that t shirt. <laughs> um, so, wait, Kelf, I'm going to scroll back because. I would have sworn you were referencing Don't Shoot the Pharmacist. Maybe you weren't. Oh, yes, you were. Loved those sideburns. Those are some crazy sideburns. Say what? <laughs> that is an entertaining movie. Uh, 
in a couple of different capacities. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's a good time. Um, also, guys, uh, those dates that are not on the website yet, Everett and Enumclaw, Washington, are um, February 10th and 11th, I believe. I'm also going to be doing some dates in Texas. It looks like Houston and Austin coming up. Those are not on there yet. I believe I have a Performing Arts Center uh, gig potentially in Anchorage, which is up in Alaska. Um, yes, Kelf, I so appreciate it. Oh, Elizabeth, thank you. Elizabeth Fahey listened to my music album, uh, which is called Variations on a Dream, and the band is called From This World. I put it out a while ago, and I just wanted it to, like, get by on its own merit rather than, uh, you know, people going, oh, it's a band that the cash cab guy has, <laughs> you know. Uh, I don't know how well it's doing, but, I, you know, it's just something I wanted to do because I, I I was inspired to make it, so I made it and I put it out there. If you guys check it out and like it, that would be awesome. Again, it's called Variations on a Dream, and the band is called From This World. It's all original music uh, written and largely performed by me, Ben Bailey. <laughs> um, all right, that's awesome. Oh, Kira has it downloaded on Apple Music. Good stuff. Sweet. Thanks. Mark G. I'm starting to think you're going to expect something, sir. I am not going back to your hotel with you just because you keep buying me drinks. <laughs> Elizabeth says, it's a great album. Dark, but different. And awesomeness. Thank you. The band the Cash Cab Guy has is pretty solid, too. That's awesome. Can I get that album name one more time? Yes, Crystal, it is Variations on a Dream. Maybe you guys can help me to get it out there. If it gets enough likes in a week, enough listens and likes in a week, then it gets put into like the next, it'll get put into a category. Maybe you guys can help me do that. Uh, I think that's on Spotify. But it's on everything, so... Uh, Red, you play bass? That's cool. No, I, the, I don't really, I haven't played with these guys in ages, but uh, I have a bass player in that band. Um, I haven't really done karaoke. I did karaoke only one time, but I always take it too seriously and, and mess it up. <laughs> um, anyway, that would be awesome if you guys uh, would go and and like that or start a channel or a station based on that. Uh, play the algorithm. That's right, man. Yes, Lance O, Variations on a Dream from this world. That would be so cool. I, I'm such an idiot. I'm, I'm so awful at marketing. I should have told you guys earlier, but like I said, I kind of wanted to see if it would could succeed on its own. And it's been out there for, for a couple of years now. And I think, you know, maybe five or ten people have listened to it. It's a good album. I listened to it all the way through while cleaning the house one day. That is so awesome to hear you say that. Not many albums you can do that without skipping songs. Um, that is such a nice thing to hear, Laura. That was the whole idea. The, whole, the album was made... Uh, my intention was to make an album that played well beginning to end. You know, the, the songs fit together. The vibe didn't change too much. There wasn't one song that was just kind of annoying and sucked and made you like skip over it, as you're saying, so... Elizabeth says, oh, my God, me too, same thing. So sweet of you guys. I'm getting excited about this. Uh, Kelf, I don't know if you'll find it on YouTube. I actually didn't put it on YouTube music. Oh, my God, I should. Kowalski, A Bit of Finger was great too. Thanks, man. A Bit of Finger was my Sabbath cover band with the same guys. It's the same dudes. Uh, From This World is actually the same guys. Um, and we had so much fun playing the Sabbath. And it really, it, it really kind of helped us, you know, my original songs, we would play those after we did the Sabbath rehearsals, and that's how they kind of grew. Uh, the Idiots, who is your inspiration? Let's take a viewer question real quick. Uh, musically, my inspirations, it's funny that you should say that, because that brings me back to 
a little bit more. Uh, sorry, Lanzo. People no longer make albums that are a coherent whole. That's not true. The guy from Cash Cab just made one. <laughs> uh, oh, Faye says a bit of finger was good, but nothing compared to this. Well, a bit of fingers. In, I mean, it's hard to compare the two because one of them were literally just playing covers of, of Sabbath tunes and trying to like get them note for note as clo- you know as close as we could. We only had three members too, so I was Ozzy and Tony Iommi, which is a you know those are both big pairs of shoes to fill. I got some set of balls even trying it. Um, but so uh, the question is, who's your inspiration? I assume you mean musically, because um, we're talking about the music album. The answer to that would be there's a ton of different different musicians and bands that influenced me uh, in my creation of that stuff. Um, oh, hey, Ben, I downloaded it on YouTube Music. Someone else might have put it on YouTube Music because I didn't, I don't, I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't put it on YouTube Music. Maybe it got put there with some stuff. I ought to put it on my channel to make sure that it's on mine. Um, but so I just oh, just last weekend, Emma and I were in L.A. She's I was out there working, and then she's coming home from Australia, and we got invited. A couple of my buddies uh, that live out there in Orange County, Kirk, Kirk Kirshner and Bill Bennett. What's up, dudes? If you're listening. Big shout out and props and thanks again to you guys for taking us. We went to a concert. We went to the Hollywood Bowl. We saw Jane's Addiction uh, and Smashing Pumpkins. And it was phenomenal. I had a great time. I hadn't like gone out to a live show in so long. I mean, I went to see... I guess it hasn't been that long. But I went to... See, I just appreciated it, man. I just I had a moment where I was like so happy just to be out and hearing stuff and, and experiencing something, you know. Uh, what's up, Don Goller? Just saw you on there. How you doing, man? Um, and I think that uh, it's occurred to me that two different guitarists have were, were bigger influences on me than I had realized. Thanks again, Mark G. Um... And that is one of them is Dave Navarro from Jane's Addiction. Like some of those guitar riffs are just awesome, and I I never really realized, but I kind of like really got into them. They have a song uh, called "Then She Did." Dot dot dot. The, the dot 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 is part of the title. Uh, and they I didn't think there was any chance that they would play that, and they did, and it's just like holy shit, what a great song that is. Um. And I maybe I'm a fool, but I was like, who's going to open and who's going to headline? Is this a dual headlining show, you know? But my buddy Bennett was like, no, man. He's like, you have no idea. He's like, he's like, Smashing Pumpkins is so much bigger than Jane's Addiction. And I just didn't know. I, I think I just kind of stopped paying attention around when Smashing Pumpkins was big. I was into them for a little while. And to be honest, when they started that song, The World is a Vampire, I was like, I'm done. Like, I was just like, I can't. What is that? I can't do that. No offense, Billy or William Corgan, as I'm told you prefer to be called now, but you lost me at that point. And I loved some stuff, and I, I'm sure I would love some of the stuff you did after that. It was probably more about me just kind of getting more into my own work because I realize also that I've been kind of obsessed with work. And I just like have done nothing but try to succeed in my business pursuits for so long that I like stopped going out and having fun. That's one of them reason. One of the reasons that I was, you know, hadn't done that in a while. But so his guitar playing was a, was a big influence. Um, and the Allman Brothers, you know, those guys, um, amazing. Warren Haynes, Greg Allman. Uh, you know, I mean, that's the same that a lot of people probably have. But I have, I have a weird combo. Like, I also, I also love Floyd. You know, Gilmore. Like a lot of Gilmore's sol- solos and stuff are just like, I think actually the solo in "Comfortably Numb" was like just recently voted like the greatest. 
Uh, anyway, so a lot of influences. A friend of mine uh, who came to visit one night last year, he's listened to my album, and he was like, fuck you. Because he's, he's like, how the fuck are you, did you make that? He's like, how are you a, I think your music's better than your stand-up, you dick. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why does, it ha- why does that have to make me a dick? I worked hard at these things. Don't I deserve it? You know, people, people get, I guess they're envious or anyway. But uh, he likened it to uh, Queens of the Stone Age. He was like, I hear Queens of the Stone Age in there. And I was like, I never, I don't really know them. Like, so, and so, and so on that note, I've listened to them more since then. And I really, I really like some of their shit. Like it's, it's really some good stuff. Uh, and the drummer from that band actually sat in for Jane's Addiction at the Hollywood Bowl last Saturday. Um, and did a great job. It was a great show. I think, honestly, I think Smashing Pumpkins had some, some technical issues. Uh, Before we go too long without one of these, let's do this again. It's a cash cab drive-by, folks. That means it's time for you to drink your drink. And for me to do my little dance in the corner. And I also have to drink my drink. Cheers, everybody. Great hangout. Having a great hang so far. Having a great hang. Um, um, yeah, they're like Queens, like several people compared it to Queens of the Stone Age. And so then I started to listen to them and they're badass, man. I like them. I really like some of that stuff. And Caius, the, the predecessor band, I think the guy's name is Ted Demi. Um, yeah, so, yeah, guys, I would love that. If you guys go and like, uh, and like start stations and whatever, maybe the, the music will get a little bit more notice. Cause I really, I really am proud of it. I really do love it. Uh, Faye's pushing it. So funny. Yes, though, you're so talented, and I'm recently more of a country bumpkin. But seriously, y'all need to download Ben's music. He is a rock star on guitar. Wow, that's very nice. Um, Kelf says, anyone here like Layback? I'm not sure what that is. Is that a band or a drink? I'm guessing it's one of the two. (laughs) Oh, man, it's already uh, 20 after 10. Excuse me. Emma says hello, by the way, and sends her love. But she is rather jet-lagged. And 1020 is, yeah. You know, I don't know if you guys know, uh, uh, jet lag from Australia to the U.S. after you spend a fair amount of time over there, uh, it's crazy. Like, it hit me for weeks after. I just couldn't, you know, it was very hard to, to adjust coming back. Um... So that's where she's stuck right now, but she sends her love and says, hello, men without hats. And the safety dance, safety dance. Don't forget to hit the button, to hit the like button. Thanks, Patricia Bradshaw. Yeah, listen to the tunes, check them out, thumb them up. Uh, And I hope you guys love it, man. I hope you enjoy that. You can also watch the full special. I know you know that. I'm one. I'm debating if I should put out my other full special on YouTube as well. Um, it's called Live and Uncensored, and you can't watch the whole thing out there anywhere. So I'm thinking about putting it out there, but I don't know. It has some stuff on it that people get a little bit uh, uptight about. Smash that like button. <laughs> Emma needs rest and relaxation after a long time of relaxing. That's right, Chooch. Vacations are exhausting. I think we all know it. It's the thing that no one wants to say. You come back from a vacation and you're more tired than you were when you left. But it's getting to be that time, folks. Uh, So nice to chat with you guys, but we're going to wrap it up and we're going to do that, of course, with a little thing we like to call Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. 
Folks, every day of the calendar year is not one, not two, or three, but that's as many as we're going to cover. Usually there's like five or six ridiculous, crazy holidays that are official holidays. Uh, today, of course, is no exception. Today's holidays, the ones that I picked, there's a few that are good, as usual. Uh, one I particularly like today, Turtle Adoption Day. So um, it's not too late, guys. It's only 10.23 p.m. where I am. Still time to go out and adopt a turtle. Uh, it is also, also, it is also National Bavarian Cream Pie Day. Now, I don't know if that's uh, national in America or national in Bavaria, where the motor works are. But it's National Bavarian Cream Pie Day, so enjoy that. I know it's a little bit late. I should do these ahead of time so you guys have time to prepare and properly celebrate. Kowalski, I don't know if you're still listening. I think you're at work, but this one's for you. It is International Shift Worker Day. There's Kowalski, who has two turtles. Kowalski, you're celebrating two of our three holidays today just by being who you are. Congratulations, buddy. Put on that underwear. All you need is a Bavarian cream pie, buddy, and you've got all three of them covered today. Uh, so those are today's holidays. Let's get to it. This weekend, one day only, it's Turtle Adoption Day. So unless you're David Kowalski and you already have two turtles, go out and adopt a turtle and celebrate. Now on the way home, pick up a Bavarian cream pie because it's National Bavarian Cream Pie Day, whatever country you're in. Give some to the turtles, you selfish bastard. Now celebrate a person you know that works at night, like me or David Kowalski, because it's International Shift Worker Day. Hey! <laughs> oh, that was fun! It was so much fun, you guys! I hope you guys had as much fun as I did doing this tonight. Um, I hope you had as much fun watching and hanging as I did doing it, I should say. For to being more specific about who's doing what and who is liking what, you know. Um, super great hang, you guys. I hope you guys are all doing Bavarian cream turtle pie. That's right, Con Con. Absolutely. Uh, please do not combine the holidays. This could be dangerous to you and several types of small animals, depending on what type of day it is. <laughs> what type of holiday it is. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for checking out the music. That means a lot to me because I put a lot into it. Uh, and I was a musician long before I was a comedian. Uh, fun hang, you dudes and doodlets. Um, next Sunday, I'll be right here. We'll be doing it again. Episode number 33. See you then. <laughs>